Hello, I'm Margaret Knoll with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching the Video Voters Guide. We, are, along with Metro East Community Media, are here with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Tom Anderson, running for Metro Councilor, District 3. Welcome, Tom. Thank you. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, and why you're running for this office. Um, the, the reason I considered running for office is that uh, Craig Dirksen, who was a friend and uh, uh, longtime um, community member of Tigard, who's a mayor, former mayor, and he's, he's on uh, Metro Council for the last eight years, uh, wanted to retire and he wanted to have some kind of succession plan into place. So he asked me if I would consider running. Um, and in my consideration, we, uh, we talked about my strengths um, on land use. I was a president of the Tiger Planning Commission for uh, seven years, and uh, they do a lot of work with the uh, urban growth boundary, as you know, and um, also on trans transportation, which, uh, the Southwest Corridor will be coming through parts of Tigard, and uh, the City Council has been working on that with TriMet and Metro for over three, four years. So I was very uh, familiar with that um, program. So um, he asked me if I would consider running, and uh, I thought I would have to run again for the Tigard Council again anyway. I've been on the council for four years, and then um, so that's why I considered it. I, it's a uh, it's a different challenge for me and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Um, what challenges to the effective and efficient operation of Metro government will result from the pandemic and how do you propose to meet those challenges? Metro has to, once, once, the, once the stay at home order is lifted, um, Metro has so many um, areas of events with the zoo and the convention center. Um, um, they really need to, to hire back the people that they've laid off, which is uh, substantial, so they can get these events uh, up and running back to the, uh, the citizens of Portland so they can have some um, downtime away from all this uh, crisis talk. Um, I think that uh, a couple, there's a couple bond measures coming up that we'll probably talk about as well. And we'll see how that all plays out with the, uh, with the pandemic, seeing how people, people's appetite for uh, more taxes are as well. Yeah, speaking of bond measures, um, Metro's in the process of drafting a regional transportation measure. Mm -hmm. And what expectations do you have about how the planned expenditures will achieve state and regional goals in reducing greenhouse gas emissions? The main, uh, the big money project in that transportation plan uh, that they're proposing for November is the Southwest Corridor project, which is a light rail piece that will uh, start from downtown Portland, go through um, Southwest Portland, um, paralleling Barber Boulevard, cutting through Tigard and Indian and Bridgeport Village. So um, as far as greenhouse gases, that's gonna get some cars off the roads. Hopefully we'll give some of our uh, citizens some options rather than, uh, than automobiles to get downtown, to get to uh, the airports. You know, once you're in that hub, you can basically go anywhere. So it's, a, it's the last really uh, big segment that TriMet has wanted to have for a while. So I think that's very important. There are also some very um, important um, highway exits and um, uh, uh, expansions on some roads that haven't been touched since 1970. So um, I think it's a, it's a big bill. It's the biggest bill that they've ever had. Um, it, it will help the state in the fact that Metro will be paying for it um, and not Grants Pass or Medford, they don't have to pay for Portland's infrastructure. 
So I think that's a wise choice uh, for the state. They can uh, allocate money to uh, different areas. Okay. How would you assess Metro's efforts to address the affordable housing and homelessness crisis? The affordable housing bond um, that was recently passed will touch all three counties. Um, we're looking for land as we speak. Um, it has uh, proved to work out very smoothly with the, most of the money going to the uh, housing authorities. Uh, Washington County Housing Authority, uh, Beaverton, Hillsboro in our area. And uh, say if a town, if a Sherwood has an opportunity to build some affordable housing, they would have access to that money. And uh, housing's, housing's big, it's just not for the homeless, but it's for the uh, um, people that, are, that have a full-time job but are making under area median, median income. So um, we'll be able to house those folks and uh, basically give them a quality of living that uh, we haven't had before. Now, as far as the mental health wraparound piece, uh, there's a new measure, ballot measure coming out in May, and uh, this May, the same time as the election, and that's gonna uh, support wraparound services for uh, mental health um, rent, uh, stabilization um, so you can get a check instead of getting evicted. Uh, studies have shown that it's far more ex expensive to replace somebody after they've been evicted than uh, just to pay a few months rent to get them up to speed. Okay and um, what about your position on the Metro ballot measure 26210 to support homeless services with high earners tax and a business profits tax. And please explain your position. My position is I will probably support it. Uh, it's a very large measure, $248 million they expect a, per year for 10 years uh, is a lot of money. Uh, we have from estimates about 15,000 homeless people in the metro area. And that would literally be about $12,000 per piece, per person, per homeless person, uh, per year that we could just give to these people. We'll have to set up um, the right infrastructure as far as the mental health piece. Um, there are some nonprofits out there, but I don't think they can handle all this influx of money without, you know, potentially hiring people from out of state. Uh, counselors. Um, it's going to be a big bureaucratic change than what we've been seeing. So it's a lot of money. I would be more excited about it if it was probably half that amount. Um, but I do understand the need for wraparound services. Uh, we just can't have home housing. We have to have people that know how to uh, get to the housing and then once they're in the housing, uh, be successful and stay there. Well, thank you very much for talking with us. Um, sure. This has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is Tuesday, May, 8, May 19th. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and ballot measures and exercise your right to vote. <laughs>